I just showed the group the song The Goldfish by Lori Berkner. Now, I'm about to link together Lori Berkner and Rumi. If anyone out there has ever done that before, please comment in the section below, right? Because I'd like to know if anybody's ever done this. But I'm gonna show you again in the spirit of oneness and unity, how Lori Berkner and Rumi are related. You know, how their concepts are spot on in a oneness way, okay? But part of it again is a therapeutic thing in terms of how we see ourselves. And uh, just last week I was talking about TJ, the spiritual self. And again, all of us are hopefully working on that spiritual development, but a huge problem with that is the ego ride shotgun in that journey. And it causes problems every step of the way. So to clearly define who we are is something that I'm about to show you, but also to add a technique or two, which I happen to like uh, using a certain method that I'm gonna uh, mention here from the song by Lori Berkner, which reminded me of the movie Revolver in one of my favorite scenes in the elevator, which I've talked about frequently, when, when uh, Jake, the character who's awakening in that movie, recognizes that he's having a battle with his ego. And the ego's inside his head, just like all of us, that's the enemy, that's the jihad, the war inside ourselves. And he recognizes he has this voice inside of his head. And he says to it, shh, 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 shh. I can hear you, I'm on to you. You don't control me, I control you. And if you catch that voice, and it's not that hard because that voice is negative and it causes pain and it's a naysayer and it says, no, you're not good enough or they're not good enough or you're better than them or you're worse than them. And it's what it says. You can hear it if you just pay attention to it. And then you got to shush it. In the, in the movie Revolver, he drops the gun at that point. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. So like the war is on, but the war is him actually letting go of weaponry, for example. How good are humans doing at that? Not so good. It's all about ego fighting. The fact is, it's the war inside ourselves and we can all hear that voice. So I love sh shushing myself when I catch the ego or the devil inside myself doing this, that, that exact thing. So I got another one in a way it's better, it's more fun. So go watch the song, The Goldfish by Lori Berkner. She sings little kid songs. And I'm gonna review it real quick. I'm not allowed to play it for it because YouTube will slap my wrist for that, but go watch it or listen to some of the lyrics. Now, Lori Berkner, is singing about fish who go swimming and then they come back, lots of little fish were sleeping on a rock, they come back and they take a nap. And when they wake up, they recognize that they were dirty. So what did the little fish do? They wash their noses, they wash their toeses, you know, they did a lot of stuff little kids would do. But then the fish recognize and say, wait a minute, we're not children, we're fish. What should fish be doing? Just swimming. They don't wash their noses and their toeses, so let's go swimming. So they go back out and they go swimming again. It repeats the story just with different words. They go riding their bikes and they brush their teeth. And then they have a recognition each time. Wait a minute, fish don't ride bikes. Fish don't brush their teeth. Again, the kids sing in the song, wait a minute, this is not what we are. Why are we doing these things that we are not, right? And then the song continues, let's go swimming, let's go swimming. Why? Because that's what fish do, okay? Fish go swimming. They don't do all those other things. Now, before I link that to Rumi, I want to remind you of an example I used, I think, a few months ago of this. Can, I think I drew it a little better this time. It's a lawnmower, okay? I got a blade down there. There's a guy pushing a lawnmower. And, and recognizing that a lawnmower is designed to do something, all right? It's going to cut your lawn. But if you get a new lawnmower and you start pushing it across the lawn and it's not cutting and you're confused as to why that is and you go to your neighbor and say, why is my lawnmower not working? And the, mower sa the neighbor says, well, do you have anything in the gas tank? It needs to be full. And they're like, no, the gas ta tank is empty. So you go get a bunch of milk and you put it in there. Is that gonna make it work? Of course not. And then you're like, no, 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 that's the wrong fuel. So then you go add water or you add orange juice or whatever, and that's not gonna work either. The mower was designed perfectly, but the fuel is wrong. But then you get some like low grade fuel with a little bit of oil in it. And now it's a little choppy. It's working better. We're closer to the fuel it needs, but it's still not gonna work its best, right? The lawnmower is designed to cut the lawns, but if there's not the right fuel in it, it's not gonna work. So there's two ingredients, right? The design and the proper fuel. Ephesians 2.10, linking the Bible to Lori Berkner and to Rumi, the Muslim poet. Ephesians 2.10, we are God's handiwork created for good works. We are actually physically designed to do things, okay? Brushing our teeth, perhaps, riding bikes, you know, maybe swimming, all that kind of stuff. 
But if we don't have the right fuel in us, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do it well. In fact, we might not do it at all, okay? So we were designed as God's handiwork. Notice, again, Christian speaking here, Apostle Paul, we're God's handiwork, and we were designed in Christ Jesus, he says, which is the fuel, okay? Christ is the fuel. Christ is the anointed one, anointed with the Holy Spirit. That's the fuel. You're a creation, too, and if you got the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to operate as you should. If you got the ego in you, that's like putting milk in this thing. I mean, you know, figuratively speaking. It's the wrong energy. It's not going to work. It's going to be divisive. You're going to argue about stuff. But you put the right fuel in this thing, you're going to do exactly what it is you need to do. Got it? So that's the same as Lori Berkner singing, hey, let's go swimming. Fish don't brush their teeth and ride bikes. You know, do what you're designed to do. Well, lawnmowers are designed to do something too, but not without the right fuel. Now, notice how Rumi here is going to clear this up. In his fourth discourse of the fihi ma fihi, which is the it is what it is saying, okay? That's what in, uh, in his language, uh, fihi ma fihi, it is what it is is this fourth discourse, and it's my favorite of his teachings. And I've told this several times before. It's a wonderful story. There's a story of the master and the king, and the king said, sends one of his servants out into the community to get some task, no, to get one task done. And the servant goes out, and he does a hundred other tasks, but he doesn't do that one task he was asked to do. So he comes back, and he says to the king, hey, I did a hundred things out there. And the king said, did you do the one thing you were supposed to do? And the servant goes, he didn't do that. And so he had to go back out and finish the task. And Rumi says, if you do the one thing, if the servant did the one thing he was supposed to do, he will have done everything, and the king would have been happy with him. But if he does a hundred other things, and he doesn't do that one thing, then he will have failed. Rumi then says, and that is our task. We are here to do one thing, one thing alone. We could do a hundred other things, and if we don't do that one thing, we will have failed. Okay? He goes on, and he teaches, and he says, He's talking about a normal human being saying, I expend myself on lofty tasks, such as law and astronomy and medicine. And like in my world, that would be trying to win championships, right? Making lots of money, being a success, lofty tasks. That's what human beings are all trying to do. Make a success of ourselves, right? Well, Rumi says, these things are a branch of yourself and you are the root. These things are a part of what you are, but you're the root. And then you can ask yourself, wait a minute. Wouldn't that have been great if Rumi had said that, sung it like Lori Berkner? Wait a minute. You're trying to be a, a lawyer or astronomer or a doctor or teacher or whatever. And you think that's what you are. You even define yourself that way. What do you do for a living? What do you do? I'm a counselor. I was a sports writer. You know, I'm a dad. Blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. I'm not those things. Those things are a branch of myself. I'm the root, says Rumi. So you got to stop and ask yourself, hmm, who am I really? Am I Steve, white American dude? Or am I something else? Am I something deeper? Rumi goes on, in this lower world, you have forgotten heavenly food. What I like to call soul food, right? Yeah, we eat our cheeseburgers and our fries and all that. And then we make a big deal out of human food. And that's useful in the lower world. He says lower world. Well, guess what? There's an upper world. There's a different kind of food altogether. And he teaches, this body is your horse. This body is your horse. This world, this lower world, is it stable? The food of the horse is not the same food as the rider. See, your body is a horse. It's not you. You're a rider of the horse. You know, if you think of it the right way, the soul is inhabiting this, if you will. But then we obsess over this. Then we define ourselves as our horse. We define ourselves as our occupation as our circumstances in life, or as our race, or our gender, or whatever. And then we argue about what's the right thing to call each other. Guess what? All of it, Rumi says, all of it, he says, you are not created for those things. Those are the branches. You're none of that. That's an extension of what you are. And then he says, the animal has the upper hand on you. Ooh, that gives me chills, right? You're riding around on a horse, and then you're paying attention to the food that the horse eats, and then you think you are the horse. Well, the horse is winning. You're the rider, and you forgot that. That's the same thing as the root, okay? And you're interested in the horse food because you think it's you. So now we're paying attention to cheeseburgers and fries and all the physical world stuff and what you do for a living. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Steve, white American dude, right? That's how I define myself. Well, in the lower world, unfortunately, Rumi says, you are not created for those things. That's not what it's about. That's the lawnmower that doesn't have the right fuel in it. Oh, it's, it's a thing, all right. I mean, I am Steve White American, dude. I am a counselor guy, former sports writer. Those things are true. 
but I haven't animated myself with the proper fuel yet. I haven't done the one thing I'm supposed to do. Because again, all of us were created in Ephesians as God's handiwork. All of us have tasks that we can do, but we're going to do them poorly or not up to par if we haven't added the right fuel. So the animal has the upper hand on you. Ask yourself, wait a minute, or say to yourself, I'm letting the animal part of me control me. That's absolutely right. We are not physical beings. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And now we're down here arguing about all the physical world stuff. And then we're adding labels on top of it. Who's right and who's wrong? And if you've bought into that narrative, as all of, all of us have, the horse has the upper hand on us. Wait a minute. Now, Rumi then says, I'm paraphrasing this because this goes on and on. Do yourself a favor and go look up the forced discourse of Fihi Ma Fihi. Basically, we have flesh masters. That, that's what we're working on. People are trying to master physical things. And again, it could be the arts. It could be uh, landscaping. It could be throwing a football grade or hitting a golf ball grade. Have at it. We're allowed to do all that stuff. Just realize it's not you. Rumi talks about the basically the flesh masters, and he tells a story um, of, of a what a, a child who ends up learning all these great things from all these great te teachers, and they become masters of physical world properties, which include law and astronomy and medicine, and all that. And Rumi says. But this one point has escaped you. The most important point of all this, what concerns man the most, is the one self. W-O-N. One self. That means when you remember you're the root. That means when you recognize what you really are. You were designed as you. I was designed as me. We were put into different spots. But you've won, just as it says in, uh, um, in, in the... In Revolver, when he talks about defeating the enemy within and then having an awakening experience, and he calms the lower self, I control you, you don't control me, that's the one self. And in scripture it says, when you've overcome, when you've overcome the enemy and you've defeated the enemy, that's the ego, once you've done that, you receive the crown of God, it says. Well, guess what comes with the crown of God? The Christ nature or the Buddha nature. The spirit comes upon you when you've defeated the ego. Don't defeat the ego. You don't win, and you don't get to fill this thing with the proper fuel. But if you do defeat the ego, and you work on oneness, because let's face it, that's the only place, this little fuel tank, that everything everybody has in common. Everybody's doing this. Aren't we all designed a little different? Sometimes radically so, and I think that's awesome. How interesting. It'd be very boring if you all looked like me. Scary world that would look like, okay? But we all look different, and we have different skills and, and different things we can work on, thank goodness different flavors of food, you know, different uh, uh, types of music and different types of movies to watch. So many interesting things, different places to vacation. It's all great. But we all have fuel in common, all right? And that's the one thing you were created for, the one self, W-O-N. That's when you embrace the unity of everything, including thy enemy. Love thy enemy. What comes over you? The type of spirit you need. Love your adversities. Your adversities are pushing you away from all this physical world obsession. Why? So you could be your best self while you're here. So you can actually manifest as God's handiwork what it is that you're capable of, your destiny, if you will. All right? Don't do that. You fall short. You're going to always have a craving. Again, I'm an addictions guy. Everybody that, that comes here has an addiction potential. And it's not for just drugs and alcohol. It's for everything. It's for money and power and relationship, food and sex and championships and all that kind of stuff. We're addicted to tons of things. But the one thing, the craving that only will be satisfied by the spirit is the spirit, right? That's the one craving we all have in common. Try everything else, you'll be disappointed by it. But try this one thing, the one self, W-O-N. Now you're a victor. Now you've realized who and what you really are. And you don't need to worry about all those labels anymore. You're free. You'll go be the best whatever it is that you are. This lawnmower will now mow great when it has the right fuel in it, right? That's what it was designed to do. If you haven't realized your destiny yet, or you're working on what you think is your destiny, you got to clear the ego out of the way, right? The, the spirit then automatically shows up. You know, Rumi talks about this on and on, just like the Course in Miracles. He says, there's only barriers between you and what you really are. Those barriers are all ego. Those barriers are physical world labels. You must remove those barriers. Miracle says, that's when the inheritance, your natural inheritance, is, which is love, appears inside of you, right? It was with you all along. It just buried. 
Once you recognize that by eliminating those ego barriers, right? Practicing being patient with each other and loving with each other and forgiving of each other and trusting some basic truths that all of us are on the same page, just don't know it. All of us are at different rates of development, right? Once you have those types of ideas down and you practice them and you get good at them, those barriers get removed, then the fuel starts to show up and whatever it is that is your destiny comes to you automatically. Who do you then give credit to? Do you take ego credit? Look what I did. I'm so awesome. Or do you go, ooh, I only did one thing. I let the spirit into me. That's the one thing. That's the one thing Rumi's talking about. Realize your root. We're only here temporarily. Your root is firmly planted in heaven right now, however you want to think of that. Okay? Recognize that. My new favorite line, recognition and liberation are simultaneous, right? The moment you have the awareness that you're fully grounded in heaven right now, first of all, that should feel good, right? Take some of the pressure off. Also, death doesn't become a thing anymore. Death is just the, merely, the mere removal of our physical clothing. And Jesus, in one of the Gnostic texts, says that you end up being absorbed by your own root, which I think is great, because Rumi's talking about roots, Muslim, Jesus is talking about roots, Jewish, Christian, whatever. They're all saying the same thing. There's a fundamental part of each of us that all of us have access to all the time. All of us are blocked by something, the idea of the false self or the lower world self. And we all have the ability to recognize and say, wait a minute, I was not designed to do this or that, or to tell you what to do this or that. Notice where religion falls apart there, right? And if you read Jesus properly or Muhammad or any of them properly, they're all saying the same thing. This is how you attack the enemy, which is inside yourself, by focusing on the enemy inside yourself, which is the same enemy you have inside yourselves. All of us are doing that collectively. And if we would just let the spirit show up and animate us, the world, and uh, Rumi says it in this discourse too, he says, the world is Garden of Eden. We're in the Garden of Eden. We've lost it because of the ego. We've lost it because of the false understanding of who we are. We lost it because of the obsession to the lower self. If we would just receive the spirit as we're supposed to receive it, we would then appreciate it. Kabbalah teaches that's what we're here for. The creator created a creation for the creatures to enjoy. How are we doing with that? Why are we not enjoying it? Because we're trying to take control of it because we're trying to insist on our own way. Doesn't Jesus say, not my will be done, but thy will? Because he got the ego out of the way. So again, you can whisper at the ego once you hear that voice inside your head, or when you're doing something that you need not be doing, which is everything, Course of Miracles says that too, you need to do nothing. The only thing that we have to be doing is receiving this thing called spirit. And anything else, just say to yourself, wait a minute, 